Now that's where this paper comes in. This paper sneaks in and says, wait a second. We know that homework is good for academic achievement. Awesome. But there's no way in heck that relationship can be linear. It cannot be as simple as more homework equals higher grades. Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now as you know, we're taking a tour through my new book, 10 Things Schools Get Wrong and How We Can Get Them Right, and this week we're going to take a look at Chapter 4, Homework, The Problem with Opportunity Cost. Now as you can expect, this chapter dives deeply into the homework issue, what works, what doesn't, so the article I've selected this week that aligns with that chapter is called Adolescence Homework Performance in Mathematics and Science by Fernandez Alonso and colleagues. Now, to understand this paper, there are kind of two issues with homework we have to come to terms with. And the first is this. So, the last 50 years of research has pretty conclusively demonstrated that homework has almost no impact on academic achievement among primary year younger students. So the impact of homework when it comes to, to learning and test performance really only starts to arise when we're talking about older kids. So in this paper, they've completely eliminated all primary year students, and they're only looking at teenagers, essentially grades 8 and above. Now, the second thing with homework we have to understand is kind of interesting. So as you likely know, the PISA is an international test that a bunch of different OECD countries take so we can start to compare different countries on their student learning and performance for whatever good that does. Now one of the interesting things they found since 2009 is students who undertake more homework perform better on the PISA exam. So there seems to be a pretty clear relationship that more homework leads to better academic outcomes. Now some schools have taken this and they have absolutely run with it. So for instance, there's a couple schools I work with now where it's required for students to have at least two and a half to three hours of homework every night. Why? Because more homework leads to better academic outcomes. We have the data, we've seen it, cool. Now that's where this paper comes in. This paper sneaks in and says, wait a second. We know that homework is good for academic achievement, awesome. But there's no way in heck that relationship can be linear. It cannot be as simple as more homework equals higher grades. So they drilled down and they followed almost 8,000 students over the course of a year to determine what impact different homework strategies and techniques had on that overall learning outcome. In this case, they were looking at GPA and test scores as their academic achievement outcome. And what they found was awesome. Turns out they were totally correct. The relationship between homework time and achievement is not linear at all. In fact, it looks more like an inverted U. So with regards to science, students reach their peak learning at about 90 minutes, after which time additional homework time actually starts to impair their learning and performance. And they found the same thing with math, only a little steeper. With math, students reach their peak performance around 100 minutes, and then again, it starts to drop off to the point where when kids are doing homework three hours a night, they're actually performing worse than kids who are only doing 30 minutes of homework a night. So it looks like max homework time should be about 90 minutes. But the researchers didn't stop there. They said, okay, what about return on investment? Performance gains aren't equally distributed all the way through that section. So if we just look at quiz scores and that first chunk of homework between 0 and 60 minutes, kids gain on average about 82 points to their quiz scores. But once we keep going from 60 minutes to 90 minutes in that second window, kids only gain about an additional 8 points. So that's 30 minutes more homework for a very small 8 point gain. So what these researchers said is on average, 60 minutes seems to be your sweet spot for learning before you start getting to that level of diminishing returns and then it actually flips and you start to get worse. So again, now this is 60 minutes overall. This isn't 60 minutes per class. This is 60 minutes of homework overall per night. Seems to be the right amount to optimize academic outcomes for middle and high school students. Now these researchers kept digging and they found two other things that I thought were really cool and worth sharing. The first is this. When it comes to academic achievement, homework frequency is far more important than homework amount. So what this means is teachers who assign a little bit of homework every night, or according to a very predictable system, will see far better results than teachers who only sporadically assign homework, but they might assign a lot, like big projects or take-home things. Frequency is more important than amount. So here's how we now start to recognize that if 60 minutes is kind of our cutoff for homework, that's fine. If every teacher is giving about 10 to 15 minutes of homework a night, that should cover our 60 minutes and we're getting that frequency. Remember, amount doesn't matter. The fact that we're simply doing it consistently seems to be what drives the impact of homework. And the second thing they found, and probably unsurprisingly is this, is the single biggest determining factor on whether or not homework is gonna boost academic achievement 
is prior knowledge. When kids do homework about things that they understand and it just takes them to the next level, they tend to do much better than when kids are trying to do homework about things they don't yet understand. So let's bring this back to us. What does this mean for us? Well, I can think of three very simple things. First, if you're in primary years, don't worry too much about homework. Homework kids can do with their parents, like reading along, having their parents help them with math and languages, that's fine. But don't expect homework, especially autonomous homework, to be meaningful at all with primary year students. Only when we hit middle high school should we be thinking about the homework game. Two, when it comes to the homework we assign, 60 minutes a night seems to be key. Once we start pushing kids into two, three, four hours, there are a few kids that will benefit from that, but those are largely the kids with deep metacognition. They already know their skills, they know how to learn, and they were probably gonna do that studying anyway. The kids who we really need to be benefiting from the homework aren't gonna benefit from those long stretches. We need to be thinking in terms of these short 60 minute stints. And third is frequency is key. A little bit every night is where we get our growth compared to a lot every night or a lot sporadically with big projects, this, that, or the other. So we're thinking about the age group, we're thinking about the duration, and we're thinking about the frequency. Now in chapter four of our book, we go much deeper into these ideas and we start to ask the question, okay, once you take academic achievement off the table, what good is homework? What impact does it have on our students, on their thoughts, their well-being, their worldviews? So if you kind of like this topic, there's a lot more to look at. Otherwise, I hope you all got something good to take away from this video. And if you, if you like what you saw, if you could please give us a thumbs up and comment below. It'll make sure more people can see this. I hope you're all well, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye, y'all.